Hey guys, uh, back here with the Jeep engine. Um, we got the valves put in and um, got them lapped. And um, they're, they're doing pretty good. I, you know, I showed you guys last time in a previous video when these valves bounce pretty good. They, uh, that means you got a good concentric seat and all of our, all of our valves are bouncing really well. Um, I will say this one right here, the number three intake. I wish it had a little bit more bounce on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and lap it um, one more time just to see if we can get it, um, you know, sealing perfectly. Um, of course, you know, that bounce test is just kind of a preliminary thing. We will eventually use uh, some, uh, some bluing agent to uh, check the seal and then uh, finally do a vacuum check to make sure that they're holding uh, uh, air. Um, and I actually, because this is a flathead engine, I may turn the thing upside down and pour some water um, in these intake ports just to see if they hold water as well. Just an, another check you can do. It's a little hard to do on a flathead because you have to spin it upside down, but we, we should be able to do that. Um, but at any rate, what we're doing here, and Nina, you know, I don't know if you can zoom in on this. I'm trying to show this gray line um, on this valve. Is that coming through pretty good, Nina? So that gray line right there is what we're trying to, uh, to get perfectly even. And when I look at this really closely, I can see that um, you know it's generally pretty good but there is some spots where it starts to kind of like fade out and so I'm going to go ahead and, and use some some lapping valve lapping compound the the compound I use comes in a um, a tin and there's a there's a coarse and there's a fine and we're going to be using the fine compound um, because this is a pretty much a brand new valve seat um, Honestly, I don't know when you would ever really use the course unless you were just like maybe repairing a head on a lawnmower or something that wasn't like super critical and you had some pitting. Um, but if you need to use the course, you probably need to grind the valve seats, kind of my opinion. So I only ever really use the fine um, grinding paste. Um, but essentially what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take this grinding paste and we're just going to apply a, a thin amount. And I'll get a little closer to the camera so that, it, so that you guys can see. Um, but basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this, and I like to put it on the suction cup first. This is a uh, um, a lapping stick. I'm sure you guys have seen these. It's just a, a thing that you roll between your hands to, to get a good lap on these. And just you know, basically gonna get some moisture on that and, and stick that on right in the middle of the valve until we get a good seal. And then I'm just gonna lightly put some of this lapping compound around. Doesn't take a whole lot. And, um, you know, this is a fine lapping compound. It'd be pretty hard to do too much by hand on this. It's just so fine. Um, but what we're trying to do is, is get that seat to sit perfectly. Um, there's some controversy, you know, newer valve cutting technology with the newer cutters. Um, they leave the seats in pretty good shape. You know, they're good enough. Um, so a lot of people don't lap them, um, but it's something that's pretty easy to do. Um, and there's nothing that's going to hurt, you know, to do it. Um, but lapping is not just done on engine valves. It's done on, you know, all types of things that have to seal. And what you're doing when you're lapping, you're basically saying there's all these imperfections and things that exist. That valve seat has slight imperfections. This valve has slight imperfections in it. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're basically grinding the geometry of this valve into the geometry of the valve seat that it resides in. And if you'll notice, I've numbered all the valves because once the valve is lapped to that valve seat, you can't move them around. It was, those, those imperfections were mated together and, and ground out by using the parts that actually mate themselves. So now, they're, now they have to be in those um, positions. Um, so this is uh, the number three intake. And as you can see, I put a very, very thin coat around the perimeter of that valve. And we're gonna stick it in here and it's very simple. You're going to stick it in and you just spin it back and forth and then I turn it 180 just to kind of make sure that um, all of the grit is kind of getting recirculated. You don't really want to do, I see some guys do this with drills. I don't really agree with that. This is such a fine procedure that a drill is not really necessary. I guess maybe if you were disabled and just didn't have the hand strength to do do it this way. Um, but I do a couple spins real fast and, and pick it up and turn it about 180 um, and just kind of keep doing this. And um, 
the suction cups always notoriously come off, so always be ready for that. And um, what I'm going to do now that we've done um, one lap real quick there, I'm going to clean this off and look at that gray line again and see if we're getting some of the lines out of it and getting it a little bit more defined. And we'll, we'll bring this up and... Uh, I'm going to do it one more time. I can see a little bit of fade out right there. I tried to put my thumbnail on it. Um, it does look better though. Um, I will say that. So we'll put another course of uh, the fine compound on. Um, like I said, I usually put the suction cup on just because it's easier to do this with the suction cup on. And uh, just, a, just a fine amount. Doesn't take a whole lot. And we'll do this one more time, and then we'll clean everything up. It's real important to get all this out of there. You do not want lapping compound getting into your motor because it has uh, got little bits of abrasive that will, you know, definitely wreak havoc on bearings and, and mating surfaces and things like that. So we'll give this another college try here. I can hear it cutting just a little bit. When you do this, it's very hard to show it on the video or get the sound, but I'm confident just about anybody that does this will pick up on it. There's a, a slight change in the grittiness as that lapping compound runs out the bottom and the top of this, but you can definitely feel as it gets smoother and those surfaces get closer to perfection with each other. It's not, it's, it's not something you can really teach on a video, but it's super easy. It's, I mean, you, you can, you can feel it in here. All right, so we will take this off clean everything off really well. Oh, look at that um, gray um, line on here to see how we're, how we're doing. And you know that looks a lot better. I can see um, that fade out's gone and we have a real distinct, good, consistent, um, you know, mating surface with that seat. So we'll go in here and we'll clean out the uh, abrasive and Guys, this is just a preliminary clean, cleaning here just to kind of check the fit. Um, when it comes time to actually put this engine together, I'm going to be running brake cleaner down that thing to get all of that abrasive out because, like I said, you don't, you don't want that stuff flying around your, your engine that's freshly built. So I'm just cleaning the lapping compound off of the uh, valve seat and do a, another really quick cleanup on the um, valve. And I'm going to remark this valve because, um, you know, through the lapping process, we lost our uh, designation. So, remark that 3i, which is number 3 for intake. Although the exhaust valves have a marking on them that denote their exhaust valve, so that's a bit redundant. But what I'm looking for is a, a good bounce here. And right away, I can tell that that is sealing up much better. Um, the number three intake valve is is bouncing a lot better than it was before. So that's how you lap a valve. Um, again, we've got good bounce on all the valves, which is a pretty good indication um, that this engine um, is, is good to go on valve seats. In fact, if we were in a, if, I'm confident that if we were in a World War II situation, one of these Jeeps, that that would pass the test and they would they would put it together and send it. Um, but here in, you know, the uh, peaceful shop in Derby, Kansas, we uh, will do it right. So we will, uh, we will get this, um, you know, we'll, we'll get some bluing compound, some, some Prussian blue, and we'll, we'll, we'll dye the, uh, the valve and, and the valve seat, and we'll touch those off to make sure we've got good contact. And then finally, we'll do a uh, vacuum test on these ports, and then we may even do a water test and, and pour some water to spin this engine upside down once the valve springs and the valve guides are all installed and everything's got valve spring tension on it, we'll probably turn this engine upside down and, and pour water into all these ports and then check to see, uh, of course we'll do one at a time, 
you know, well, some of them you can't do one at a time because the valves are Siamese and they're shared. But wherever we can get isolated to one, we'll do each one just to see if, if we have any leaking. And if we do have any leaking, you know, um, we'll be looking at that to see if we can fix that with more lapping um, or if it's going to require a little bit more, uh, you know, valve grinding work with uh, with the valve cutters. I say grinding, I really mean valve cutters because these, these valves anymore are, are pretty much cut and not ground. Um, but that's it guys. Um, you know, just wanted to show you real quick how to lap a valve and uh, hopefully in, in the next videos we'll, we'll cons consider uh, or continue with the reassembly of the uh, L134 motor. Thanks guys.